Dollogy is excited to have Amber Holcomb in the house today. Hello. Thanks for, being, <laughs> thanks for being with us. And you have donuts on your shirt. I do. I do. I'm representing our future. Joshua, step forward. Shannon, step forward. You're both going through to the next round. Sorry, back row. A lot of people got cut during Vegas round, season 11. You got cut. Yeah. Janelle got cut. Candace. Candace got cut all in season 11, but you were in kind of a power group with Curtis Finch Jr., Josh Ledette, and Shannon McGreen, but you looked like a completely different person and performer. Who was that girl and how did she get oh my gosh. to where she got a year later? That girl was shy and quiet. Amber, I mean, it was a little quiet for me. I don't know, however, that oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Amazing. I was 16 at the time, and I was with my parents, and, you know, I had them in my ear, and then at the same time, I was trying to do what I wanted to do, but I was too scared to do it. I guess the difference between 16 and 18 is... I know, like, is, once you turn 18, you feel like you're, like, grown and official and stuff, so I think that played a little part in it also. You auditioned for season 12, and we don't really see any of you at all up until the Vegas performances started. I just had the best of luck, you know, my audition, I lost my voice. In the group song, I didn't know any of the words, but my last solo was pretty good. So, you know, but back at home watching it, I was like, oh my gosh, they're not showing me. They're gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna make it that far, da, 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 da. It was really, I was hard on myself about it. But I'm glad they didn't show me until top 40 because I feel like, you know, that was my statement. I heard the Carly Simon version and you know, I was like obsessed with it. So I download instrumentals on my phone and I sing while I drive to work. Okay. So I downloaded the My Funny Valentine instrumental and it just happened to be Barbara Streisand's. And you know, I was singing with it, singing with it and doing different things with it. So I had actually prepared My Funny Valentine. Like I had been singing it for like three weeks, adding my own little runs and really? things. Yeah. So it was, it was weird how that fell into place. I was like, I know when I go, I'm gonna sing My Funny Valentine. <laughs> What was it like the next morning to get up and realize you were one of the people that everyone was buzzing about? It was weird, it was crazy. Cause my mom was like, I'm on the internet and all I see is you. And then I got people talking about my blue shoes and my red skirt. Legs for days, pretty little dimples. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know, it was really weird. Was really <laughs> so top 10 girls week, you picked I Believe in You and Me and you followed up with your victory song of I'm Every Woman. Was that a calculated decision to say like, yes, I am presenting <laughs> myself as a young Whitney because we heard young Whitney a lot after that. I wasn't planning on going in this being the young Whitney. When it comes to song choice, like when I get to pick it, my mind goes blank. And I think that was the first song that popped in my head because I didn't want to go out and sing like a slow song. And I didn't want to do a song that was way too current, you know, and I don't really think anything was really out then that I could have came on stage as a victory song. So right. That just happened to be the first song that popped in my head. And with I Believe in You and Me, how hard, I mean, you make it look easy to hit those notes. I do believe in you and me. It's really not that hard because I grew up listening to Whitney and I used to mimic her. Like me growing up, if I sounded bad, I would do it over and over and over. Even to this day, if I mess up, I'm like, okay, let me do it again and again and again until I get it right. So I like studied her, mimicked her. So I haven't seen that song for like a really long time. So it really, it wasn't that hard. <laughs> I don't want to sound like cocky or nothing, but it really, it wasn't, it wasn't right. hard. Top nine week, I loved She's Leaving Home. I really did. I thought it, it sounded like a new song. You got some pretty tough feedback from the judges and I think you were pretty hard on yourself. I don't ever want you to look defeated up there because there's no reason for you to feel that way. My mind was everywhere. I was trying to remember the words, but the song is a story. So I was like, okay, Amber. And I did it so good in rehearsals and all that. But when it came live and everybody was watching me, you know, the pressure of that and then the stairs, but we lowered it, so that wasn't that big of a deal, but I didn't want to fall like in the little strip holes with my heels. And the smoke. Yeah, the smoke, and like oh, I was walking weird. The beginning was kind of messy, but like towards the end, I was like, okay, Amber, you can't mess up the ending. Bye, bye. Do you like doing that kind of storyteller? type of song. Oh my gosh, I love it, because that's what made me fall in love with the song. Like, that was so last minute, because me and Laz were listening to like a whole bunch of Beatles songs, and that came up, and I heard it, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is the song I want to do. I love this song, so I'm going to sing it. So we get to top seven week. I'm noticing that you had done five straight ballads, and you did What About Love, which is a little closer to a ballad. Uh, 
I've heard so much about it. <laughs> <I don't think laughs> you, what did you think of the feedback when people were like, we want to hear you do up-tempo at that point? I would have loved to. But, I mean, you're in a competition, and I feel like certain upbeat songs nowadays aren't vocally challenging or, you know, you can't really do a lot with it. You can do an upbeat song and, like, have fun and stuff, but at the same time, you still have to make a mark. And, you know, you want America to vote for you, and America loves the, the high notes and the <laughs> uh, moments. I'm so indecisive. Like, I'll pick a song, and when I start singing it, I'm like, no, this isn't going to work. Do so you change songs a lot during I do. the season? You do. I, or I did. <laughs> I did. I'm so indecisive. Like, I'll pick a song, and when we play it on the piano, and I start singing it, I'm like, this is not going to do anything. It's not a moment. If you had to pick one song this season that you threw away that you are really glad you didn't cover, what was it? Well, not really glad I didn't cover it, because it would have been good, but Motown week, I was going to do the theme from Mahogany. Oh. Yeah. Do you know where you're going to? Yeah. That's a hot song. I wanted to do it, but I mean, I was, the week before was Beatles and I didn't remember the words. So I was like, I'm not going to, I can't, I can't take a chance again and not do a song I don't know. The next week you actually came out and did Love on Top. Was Love on Top your way of saying I can do up tempo? But that's such a hard song. It is a hard song. It keeps song. going up and ah. up and up and it's fast and it, doesn't ever let up. That wasn't my way of saying, I'm doing an upbeat song. I just, I love that song. I wish I would've wrote it, you know? But that song was really hard. <laughs> After I picked it, I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna change it, because I, I try not to be so indecisive. I think that might have been your best week on the show, because you also had Say a Little Prayer, which the judges went crazy for. The competition just started tonight, y'all. You had that cool blue pants suit. I know, that was and the best. Oh my gosh, that was my favorite, I think, outfit. Tell me about picking that particular song, and how did, I mean, you, you did something, I think, to make it feel a little more current. When we're talking about, like, arrangement with the band and stuff, I, Ray, he's says we amberize it you know and that that became like a word like just amberize it so I don't know I, they they kind of get me as an artist and how I like music to be sometimes I think of it beforehand but I mean most of the time Ray he just knows that I, I'm more of like R&B kind of 808 kind of thing going on so he 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 gets it together, together. about fashion while, while we're discussing the blue pantsuit. <laughs> you seemed to take fashion seriously. And you know, <laughs> you can't go out on stage like you go to the mall. So exactly. how much did you think about fashion and was it fun for you to, to delve into that side of things? I love that. You like my zipper jacket, by the way. I you did were, like your zipper you jacket. The only, thing I didn't, the only thing I didn't like was the shredded jeans. You know I made fun of that Oh, that's, oh, okay, I thought it was a jacket. I thought it was a jacket, it was a jeans. <laughs> Somebody told me I should wear them today, but I don't have them. <laughs> but, okay. <laughs> but I'm an old man, so what do I know? <laughs> you know, we get to top five week, and I think there was a lot of talk about like who's current, who's radio ready. But I feel like there's this strange pull with you that there's also like a really jazzy vocalist side to you. And when you did the Barbara Streisand song, it was like we hadn't really seen that side of you since My Funny Valentine. And it was like, oh wow. I was gonna do something else. What were you gonna do? I was gonna do Whitney, did me almost have it all. The Barbara Streisand song, you know, was actually suggested for me. And I love, like I said, I'm an old soul. So jazz, I feel like the feel of jazz is just like so good. But when we were talking about that song, I had never heard it before until Idol. So like they were playing it on the piano and they were like, ooh, that's hard, that's hard. And I was like, what? <laughs> Let me hear it. Let me hear it. <laughs> so I mean, right when they said it was hard and I heard it, I fell in love. And like that's like it was like a project for me. Like I had to listen to it and sing it over and over until I got it. But I love doing things that I feel are a challenge. <laughs> That was also a week where you got very tough criticism from Nikki about your performance of Without You. Like you got a standing O from the other three judges yeah, yeah. and then Nikki sat and I was like, Nikki's sitting, like mm -hmm. uh-oh. Mariah, when she's doing it like low, it still, it's, it still has some feeling in there. I feel you were really stoic. I know my lower register. Sometimes it's good, but it's like, I call it boo-boo trash. <laughs> but I mean, you know <laughs> boo -boo what? Boo-boo trash? Boo-boo trash. <laughs> okay. Cause my lower register, it's harder for me. Cause I have, I think I guess a high range, I don't know. But Nikki can read. I don't know if you started low. I understand you wanted to go for the high notes. She saw that, you know, I wasn't that comfortable with it. And I mean, she was right. She was right. In the beginning wasn't that, it wasn't my best. But I guess that's just the way the story goes. 
top four week, it was contestant's choice, and you picked Celine Dion's Power of Love. Mm -hmm. And I have to ask why. Because I feel like that did not present you as the current yeah. person in the competition. Ah. And I just wondered, where did that choice come from? Like I said, when it comes to me picking a song by myself, <laughs> I kind of, I think of things that I've listened to growing up that are like powerful. And that song, that was the first song. And Celine, I love her. You know, that was the first song that came to my mind. Is there a, a challenge too, because a lot of today's current songs just don't have a big vocal range. I mean, you're yeah. not gonna pick Kesha, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's weird. <laughs> Cause I mean, every time I tell somebody about me as an artist, I say a modern Whitney, because even her upbeat songs were vocal. Ooh, like a Heartbreak Hotel. Or uh, like Dance My With Love Somebody. Love. Yeah, mm -hmm. interesting. You also did MacArthur Park that week. That seemed like ah. one of, I felt like One Hit Wonders Night. The song choices were quite odd. Yeah, they were, they were. I, I hadn't <laughs> heard of any of them, except for MacArthur Park, and I knew the Donna Summers version. This whole season, I was just digging the songs that I knew after the Beatles thing. I was like, I don't want to learn a new song unless I'm in love with it like I was with the Beatles. So MacArthur Park was, the song I knew and I knew nobody else knew it. So I was like, okay, I'm good. Maybe not one we'll see on tour though. Mm. <laughs> Maybe not, no, no, no. <laughs> you should remember the words, but I mean, it happens. People forget words. So we gotta talk about your last week on the show. I felt like the pre-performance packages mm. were kind of brutal. To be perfectly truthful, she had no idea what that song was about. How hard is it to hear that package? Cause you're on stage, they play yeah. that, and then it's like, go out and sing it now. Is your figure less than Greek? What does that mean? It was definitely a lot more pressure. I didn't appreciate that at all. What is Greek? What are we talking about? Uh, you need some help? I do. Golly, it was so much other, like so many other things in the interview that they could have used, or they didn't even really have to stretch it out like you said. I didn't appreciate it. How long were you with Harry Connick that day? We were together, like by ourselves. I want to say like 45 minutes, an hour. Okay, so they had quite a bit of footage to yeah, choose from. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know he said some nice things. They weren't all <laughs> bad like they showed on TV, <laughs> I would hope. So what's next for you? You've got this platform, you have this fan base. Your job now is to try and turn that into a career. You have to stay relevant. But me personally, what I see myself, music is number one, I love music. But you know, I wanna be like on runways and movies and you know, advertising. Like I want people to turn their face and see me like there. <laughs> can you act? Yes. You can. I, I was in a play. I was in a play once. I was the moving chair. <laughs> you were a what? <laughs> the moving chair in Beauty and the Beast. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, I mean, I feel like I can do it all. Like I really, I would take some classes of course, but. Do you write as well? I do, I do, but. I mean, I'm, I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm not ready for the world to hear just yet. <laughs> but I do right, I do. I'm Haley Steinfeld and you're watching ENTV. Hi, my name is Kieran and Shipka and you're watching ENTV. Aubrey Plaza, ENTV. I just touched it with my mouth, sorry. <laughs>